You talk a lot about breaking the male gaze. Do you have a problem with lesbians as well? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely not. No? <laughs> so, uh, you make these um, stupid little videos online. I'm, I'm a writer and actor. I, I have a series called Vagina Hotel. Yes. And then I have a series called Me Versus Brain. Right. And I basically talk to my body parts about things that are kind of taboo. So you run this vagina hotel. Mm. Yeah. Uh, my uncle uh, used to run a bum hostel. <laughs> my, my cousin and I uh, went to visit when we were younger and we went batty packing around Europe. Mm. We were both interrailing Italian men. How many characters are in this, this, this uh, oeuvre? Um, well, it depends on, on the sketch, but there's, I mean, there would be quite a few characters in there. Uh, hormones, periods, tampon occasionally goes in. Uh, I mean, you played, as you say, such a wide range of roles, everything from a floppy willy to your own poopy bum hop. Correct. <laughs> what do you think has been your most challenging role? Was it the, the bloody tampon that gets stuck in your twat or the bum hole caked in poo? <laughs> Was it always obvious to you to sort of focus on women's issues? Yeah. Because I think it's the one that, like, for me, I didn't really learn about it growing up. So, um, what kind of issues are we talking about here? Periods. The, the cycle we go through. Obviously, I'm, I'm a man, as you say. Um, you know, I, I don't know loads about it. I know the kind of basics, though, is that obviously once a month, full moon, hairs on the back of your neck stand up, your snout extends, your shoulders crack back, your tongue splits in two, eyes go black. <laughs> you know, but a lot of men are still very ignorant about this. I don't think that's quite a, a, an accurate representation of, of what happens. Scuttling. Misinformation almost. Scuttling on the kitchen floor looking for chocolate? No. <laughs> the tampon tax? Yeah. They tax tampons? Yeah. Yeah. The pink tax? My wife's tampons, they add VAT on. Right. It's not, not her fault, she needs a mattress. <laughs> and then people will say, can you, do, can you do a video about this? and this experience I've had, and then I'll go, yeah. Yeah. You, in some ways, you're set up for life as there's an audience of women that want to see you make light of, of their experience as well. Do, do you worry that when the time comes, you'll be too hairy to make menopause videos? <laughs> do you think about the day when you finally have to hang up your tampon? No. No, I don't think about that. Okay. I actually use menstrual cups, so. Menstrual what? Menstrual cups. Cups? Yep. My wife uses a Sports Direct mug. <laughs> I think women just haven't always spoken about their needs as much. I mean, it's happening more now, but I think women have always been the afterthought in sex. Mm. It's always been about the guy. Yes. And, you know, there's this uh, idea that a lot of women actually don't enjoy sex. Yeah. I mean, I don't enjoy netball, but I still watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure that's the same thing. It's all right to like different things, isn't it? Because mm. I'm, I'm at the stage now where... Um, I've been married so long that I'm faking my wife's orgasms for her. I sort of shake her legs and make them not... And then my neighbour just comes in and chucks mayonnaise on my back. Hey. Is your wife okay? You do a lot of stuff about poo as well. Right, yeah. yeah. Right. It's one of those things, again, that women feel uh, uncomfortable talking about and we've been made to feel a bit like we shouldn't. I like to think of myself as the poo girl. I mean, is it a, it's a good thing to talk about, but I guess you don't want to be the turtle head of that movement. <laughs> so IBS, that's when you get like a period in your bum? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Okay. I don't know if I have IBS. Right. I might do, I might not. Because you might have IBS, but we think my wife's got IDS. What's that? Irritable Down Syndrome. It's a real kicker because I guess one of the main upsides with Down Syndrome is that they're pretty happy, but not my wife. It's harder to diagnose in women. It goes unnoticed. You know Claire Balding? Yeah. <clears throat> She's got it. Must do. I don't think so. Broad back. Love sources. You do the maths. Right. She can't. Uh, this is one of your fans reading it. We don't get many female viewers, but... Um... Right. Um, okay, so this is from Pamela. Dear Hayley, as a 33-year-old woman with a career and no boyfriend, I have recently decided to freeze my eggs. That way, when I drive past the circus with my windows down, 
I've got more chance of knocking a gypsy the fuck out. Sure, <laughs> sure that's fan mail? They're your fans, mate. <laughs> Talk to me about your, your book. What do you want to know? Um, it's me versus Brian. Well, who's Brian, firstly? It's Brain. <laughs> oh, oh, right, OK. Yeah. That makes a bit... Right. And it says, an overthinker's guide to life. And you, and you think that that's a problem that your, your fans have? They're thinking too much? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. This woman's dressing up as a poopy bumhole, but what, what, what's the subtext here? What's, <laughs> what's really going on? <laughs> What's the most amount of views one of your videos ever got? Uh, I, I think 38 million. 38 million. Mm. And really, that's, that's probably 70 odd million, what with the carers. Read an extract here, help you sell some copies. And this, as you say, is, um, is something that, uh, you know, it's a continuation of your uh, online stuff. Uh, it's chapter two. Women poo too. Um, how long did it take you to write that? <laughs> Was that a long weekend or was that you sort of, were you in a flow state? Um, moving on to, to chapter six. This is sort of, I guess, the, um, one of the sort of turning points in the plot. <laughs> pee pee poo poo pee pee bum bum, hurty bum bum, ouchie foof. So it's for readers of all ages. Mm. It's quite a mass market. Yeah. I've done well there. Yeah. Me versus brain, for sale now. Home base, B&Q, Victorian plumbing. You did a YouTube series called The Poop Diaries. Yes, I did, yeah. You should do a collab with Anne Frank. Her diary's shit as well. You could do the poop diaries of Anne Frank. Day 34, had a burrito last night. This morning I hit the bowl so hard I set off an air raid siren. That's how they found her in the end, you know that? Do you like riddles? Yeah. You like a riddle? Yeah. What am I? I have four legs and four feet. I'm soft in the middle, but I'm hard all round. What am I? Wait, so you've got four legs, four feet, you're soft in the middle, but hard all around. A bed? No, it's Philip Schofield's dressing room. <laughs> so you used to work at Disneyland. Disney World. Disney World. Mm. What's the difference? I don't know, but people are very passionate about it being world and land. Were you dressed up as, as Goofy or something? Or? No, no. No. I was a, a bartender. Because uh, I don't know if you knew this. Did you know this? Uh, did you know your history? The, um, they modelled the Disney castle on that place in Germany. You know that? That's the staff entrance. Right. You know, when you're drunk and you get a tattoo in a foreign language you don't understand. Well, we went to Oktoberfest and my wife got so pissed she actually got that tattooed right above her bum. Less of a tramp stamp, more of a camp stamp. Because <laughs> they, they keep remaking all these Disney films, don't they? Keep yeah, the... I think just because the IP runs out, they have to remake it to keep the IP. Now, what's all this controversy about fucking uh, Lenny Henry playing Snow White? <laughs> It's just lazy, you're getting the same guy did The Little Mermaid. <laughs> um, we've actually got one of your fans has written in with a, with a new <laughs> version of The Princess and the Frog. Okay. Do you want to read it out? Yeah, She'd, you'd love that. Yeah, so The Princess and the Frog. The most beautiful of all the king's daughters was playing by a rock pool one day when she lost her ball in the water. Out popped a frog who said, give me a kiss and I will fetch your ball. <laughs> okay, replied the princess. And the frog dove into the water and came out with her ball. Now, where's that kiss your highness promised? She closed her eyes tight and planted a kiss on the frog's lips. Suddenly, as she opened her eyes, the frog was transformed into a real life handsome prince. Gosh, she exclaimed. Please introduce yourself so I can forever know the name of the man who gave me my first kiss. Prince Andrew? <laughs> he replied. So the princess legged it home and started running her mouth off to the papers about how she was underage or some bullshit and the prince wasn't allowed to wear his big boy clothes for his mum's funeral. Tragedy. Mm. Oh shit, it's that time of month. Oh no, wait, honey, I don't care. It's in the fridge!